But which AFC quarterback situation, guys, do you find most interesting in the AFC? Is it Lamar Jackson? Is it somebody else? I'm going to Believe Land. I'm going to Cleveland. I find this fascinating. They go and they trade for Tyrod Taylor, who was in a playoff game last year and started a playoff yep. game and had a really good 2016 and 2017 season. But then there was never a doubt that they were taking Baker Mayfield. Now the question is, when does Baker start? And if Tyrod Taylor comes out of training camp and is a starter, how many games until Baker starts? And what if Tyrod's really good? Mm -hmm. What if Tyrod exceeds expectations? Do you just have Baker Mayfield sitting on the bench? And if that's the case, did you waste that first overall pick? Mm -hmm. It's a real fascinating situation because all we hear about is how competitive and how pro-ready Baker Mayfield is. He's the most efficient quarterback we've ever seen in college football. He's the most accurate quarterback we've ever seen in college football. He can read a whiteboard like no other quarterback coming out of college since Andrew Luck ever has, and yet we're going to tell him that you're not going to see the field mm -hmm. to start the season. I can't wait for training camp. I can't wait to see how this plays out because it's not like you've got this big statue of Joe Flacco and an athletic quarterback like Lamar Jackson where you'd use both of them at the same time. Right. In this situation, they're kind of the same body type. Their strengths are kind of similar. Accuracy. I totally agree. Great footwork. Yeah. And Baker Mayfield was the first overall pick. He was not the 23rd overall pick. He was not a second-round pick. The first overall pick. If Baker Mayfield is what he's supposed to be, should be starting in Cleveland very soon. And if that's the case, what's Tyrod Taylor going to do? I think their situation is unique, too, because first and foremost for Cleveland, like, they need to get a win. That's no matter what they have to do. If Tyrod starts, and even if he plays well, and they lose the opener to Pittsburgh, and then they lose at New Orleans, now they're 0-2 again. And I think it's like you've got to do something to get a win. That is the 10,000-pound weight on their shoulders. So even if Tyrod is playing kind of well, if they, unless they actually win, they got to win the damn the last game. Team they I beat think Kyle, they could go win. This, the San Diego Chargers. Not L.A. Not L.A., the San Diego. And it was at home, and it was two seasons ago. So Tyrod could play well, but he needs to win the games, or I think they put Baker in. You make a such, such a good point because it's an inevitability that something has to happen, right? It, even if Tyrod Taylor plays amazing, uh, history has told us that Oftentimes, the starter that's playing amazing will eventually get replaced by that top draft pick regardless. Mm -hmm. But if they're in a situation where Baker Mayfield all of a sudden wins that job and we all assume that Tyrod Taylor played well enough to keep it, do they deal Tyrod? Mm -hmm. like, it's all these different ways that this scenario can play out, but that is the one position that you'll ago, pay attention to Case Keenum very closely. Case won the job out of camp, and everyone was like, all right, but Jared Goff. And Keenum like, won a bunch of games. They started off 3-1, and one, yeah, the Rams. But as soon as Keenum lost a couple of games, it was like, so, all right, let's go yeah, to golf. Like yeah. it was, so I, Tyrod Taylor, they like him. They're yep. saying he's a day one starter. Yep. I don't see him possibly finishing the season when you have the number one overall draft pick mm. yep. sitting there on the bench. Yeah.